Hello everyone, this is Samiri, and in today's tutorial we're going to be covering a few more programming uh, functions that you can mimic in Disney Infinity 2.0. And what we'll be covering today is the OR function, the AND function, and the IF THEN ELSE function. We're also going to go through a few basics of understanding how to program, and you can't see me air quoting when I say program, Disney Infinity 2.0. Now, two of the key things to be aware of when you start programming some logic into Disney Infinity 2.0 is that everything works off a trigger. Uh, there's almost no situation where you do not have to trigger or look for a trigger to cause something else to happen. Uh, there's no toy that you can just say, okay, um, well, I can't even think of a way to describe it without a trigger. I just guess I'm that used to using this game. But, uh, the other important thing to know about uh, programming in Disney Infinity 2.0 is there's a reason I'm going to be demonstrating the if then else statement because the if then statement is pretty much every single toy in Disney Infinity 2.0. Every toy works on a triggered if-then statement. So let's just say I put down a random toy here and what do we have? Enemy generated. Perfect example. Enemy defeated. If enemy defeated, then and hook it up to something. So for example, I throw down a party cannon and I could say, if enemy defeated, then give me some fireworks. And let's say I want to generate an enemy. I have to trigger that enemy generator, so I'll put down a button. And I'll say, if the button is pressed, give me an Omnidroid. And now I've just done two if-then statements. Everything working on trigger because now my character has to trigger this button, which will spawn an enemy. Then I have to defeat that enemy, which triggers the enemy defeated to fire off fireworks from that party can. So just a little quick demonstration, of course. Push the button. Troy pops up. Jasmine goes crazy on him. He's defeated. And there's some fireworks. So. Everything requires a trigger, and every toy being linked to another toy is simply an if-then statement. So we're going to start with an OR statement. And I'm going to do that in a simple way. I'm going to put a trigger area here. I'm going to put a trigger area here. And why not? We'll drop another party cannon right in the middle here. So I'm going to make a simple if any player enters this trigger area, which is what we just selected here, if any player enters that trigger area, I want some fireworks. So I walk into that trigger area, I get some fireworks. Now I want an or state. Incredibly simple in this game. I just hook up this a, another piece of logic whatever I want. It wouldn't have to be another trigger area. It could be that button up there. It could be anything. And say, if any player enters, fire off the fireworks. And now I have a very simple or statement. I can get into this trigger area and fire the fireworks, or I can get in this trigger area and fire those fireworks. So there's no official uh, creativity toy for or functions. It is simply the act of hooking up two different trigger uh, items to whatever you want the result to be. So an OR function, pretty simple to uh, do. Uh, we'll actually come back to the OR function in a little bit. But first, I'm going to show you the AND function. And we're going to do something pretty similar. So, to create an AND function, we're going to do the same thing, where we're going to use two trigger areas, and our function is going to be based on if the player enters 
this trigger area and he enters this area, no matter which order he does it in, then we want to get some fireworks. Now for this we do have to add an extra piece of logic. There is a creativity toy in here and if you watch my videos you've probably never seen me use this before. Uh, because, well, I'll get into that as we're going. But the dual action trigger is actually an end gate. So we would hook up on if any player enters this trigger area, then we want to send a signal to input 1. And if any player enters that trigger area, we're going to send a signal to input 2. And once it's complete, we'll have some fireworks. So now I have to enter both of these trigger areas in any order, and once I've entered the second one, because the entire game works on a trigger event, that will fire off the party cannon. So I've entered that trigger area, nothing's happened yet, but when I go in here, there goes the trigger area. Now, the reason I don't use this gate is because this isn't just an AND gate, it is actually a one-shot AND gate, meaning it can only happen once and unless you reset the device and send a separate input into each side again, it will only fire the once. And I, the fact that it only fire once, I have no problem with that. I would actually love it if they would create a toy that was just a one-shot trigger. Uh, you send one input and it fires as a signal once, and then it's done unless you reset it. That would be brilliant. I would love this. Uh, the, the thing with the AND gate is there are so many situations where once upon a time I might have used an AND gate, but because I have to send the two separate signals and the reset clears both signals, I, I don't find it very handy in 99% of situations. I did use them exclusively in one toy box I released uh, called Dancy Pants 2. And if anyone has any interest, I might do a tutorial on how to actually use this toy in that type of scenario. But I'll just say that in most situations, I find much better ways to do things than using the AND gate. So, before we move on to if then else statements, we're going to look again at this OR gate. And we're, I'm going to actually demonstrate my own one-shot circuit. Now, there's a lot of ways you can make these things do uh, a one-shot type deal where uh, a person enters one of them, and that device will only fire the once, and if anyone enters any of the others, it'll never fire again. There's lots of ways to do it. I could say if it explodes, or if the party can goes off, I could deactivate both these triggers. So that's one way to do it. Um, and in almost every situation you'll find, there is a way to ensure that it's one shot. But I'm going to show you the circuit I use that is a guarantee every situation it works, and even better, it works right away. Because in certain situations, let's say I had these two trigger areas, hooked up in OR gate type fashion to this enemy generator and then I had the if an enemy is generated deactivate both of these so that no more enemies would generate it actually takes 2 or 3 seconds for the enemy to generate and in that time if the player was running in and out of this trigger uh, 2 or 3 maybe even 4 enemies would actually manage to spawn before the first enemy generator trigger deactivates these trigger areas. So I would end up with more enemies just because I had a player who didn't know he was supposed to stand still. So there is a way to ensure that in any situation you can put a one shot in and it's going to be a fast one shot. It will happen instantly. So what we're going to do is remove the links from both of these trigger areas. And instead, we are going to say enter player any. So if any player enters that trigger area, send an input to the top logic. 
And if any player enters the bottom trigger, send an input again to the top logic gate. And we'll get a bit further into logic gates further on, but logic gates default to open. And when they're open, if you send input, the signal goes out. Output. So this logic gate will be open. So I'll say the output will fire the fireworks. Now, this is how I make it a one shot. I say the output sends an input to the second logic gate. And since it is open by default, I say its output closes this logic gate. So now, if you hop back into any of these trigger areas, a input signal will still come to this logic gate, but because it's now closed, a signal goes out input blocked, and I have nothing attached to input blocked. So now if I step into one of these trigger areas, that cannon goes off, pretty fireworks, but it's never going to go off again because this logic gate is now closed, and we have effectively created a one-shot out of two logic gates that works in any situation you need, and it's instantaneous, which is sometimes handy. So now we have created an AND function, we've created an OR function, and we've put a one-shot capability into our OR function. So the next thing we need is an IF-THEN-ELSE statement. And the perfect logic for an IF-THEN-ELSE statement is, in fact, a logic gate. And that is because it is a switch that has two different states. So if you look at uh, the basic, basic way you would view a logic gate is I would call it an if open, then output, else input blocked, is how you could view a logic gate from a programming standpoint. So, unfortunately, because everything works off triggers, you can't just view a logic gate alone as that if statement I just mentioned. It is actually the input state of the logic gate that becomes the if open then output else input blocked. So, how are we going to test this? Out? We're going to put ourselves a couple trigger areas here. We're going to put one here one here, and I'm going to drop two party cannons down this time. Now, as I said, uh, logic gate is a switch and it always defaults to open unless you've closed it. So this logic gate is open. And when a logic gate is open and it receives an input, it goes out output, uh, as in if open then output. Now, if it's closed, the message goes out input blocked, which is how you can get the if open then output else, because it only has two states, the else has to be the input blocked. So what we're going to do is we're going to put up this trigger area to say, if any player enters that trigger area, we will send an input to this gate. And that, because this logic gate is open, is going to be an if open, which it is, then fire off this party cannon, which it will. And it will ignore the else statement because the logic gate is open. So what this trigger area will allow us to do is enter player to any, and we will flip this logic gate to closed. And then if we walk back into this trigger area, we will again hit the input, which is where our if statement resides, and we will get the if open, then, well it's not open, so we're going to ignore the then fire this parity cannon, and we'll hit the else, which is input blocked, so else, fire this parity cannon, and in that situation, the bottom parity cannon will fire up. So, just to demonstrate that this is actually how it works, I'm going to step in here, the logic gate is open, so the top party cannon here should fire. And I haven't put a one shot or anything on here, so I can wander in here as much as I want. And that party cannon will just keep firing.
Now if I wander over to this trigger area, I have now closed that logic gate. So now you can view an input into this logic gate as if open, then this party cannon, but it's not open, so the else statement of this party cannon will take effect. So if I walk in here, the bottom party cannon should fire off. And there it goes. We have just successfully made an if then else statement. That is some of the basics of programming, again air quotes, in Disney Infinity 2.0. Uh, that's an AND gate, an OR gate, a one-shot trigger, and a if then else statement. Uh, also try to remember that every function or every time you do anything in the toy box, every toy requires a trigger and every toy's is an if-then statement. And as long as you remember that, the world opens up before you and you start to be able to do all sorts of crazy things in the toy box. This again is Sumerian and I hope this tutorial has been of some use to you. Have a great day.